Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 107 for Wednesday, July 20th, 2016. Audiobook players. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's summertime, and you know what that means, right? Yes, it does mean that it's sometime between June 20th and September 22nd, but it also means that I'm hitting the road. That's right, road trip. Actually, this is our first big road trip with the kids, and so I am slightly nervous. How am I going to entertain a car with two kids for nearly 12 hours each way? Uh, slightly nervous might be putting it lightly. In fact, I'm slightly terrified. We don't do tablets or screens in the car, mainly because we've tried that, and the kids suffer from motion sickness when we do that. So we're limited to other ways of entertaining them. We've got all sorts of doodads, coloring books, word puzzles, card games, and all that kind of stuff. But our kids really enjoy audiobooks as well. And that'll give us parents a chance to, you know, focus on the road for a bit. I have a host of classic kids' books in MP3 form and thought I'd check out a few audiobook players for the drive. So let's take a look at three of the best, as recommended by you in this week's roundup. All right, first up is Listen Audiobook Player. You can see I have all of my Hans Christian Andersen books in its own folder inside Listen. I'll go ahead and tap into that, and I'm shown the list of books. For those that have an embedded image, I can see that right next to the title. And below each is a running timeline that indicates the length of the book, as well as how far into that particular book I am at the moment. Let's play The Little Mermaid, and it takes me through to the player page. And that hero image is largely set into the background with all of my controllers for playback and transport on top. Looks pretty nice. The double arrows skip forward or backward in 10 second increments and the triple arrows skip in one minute increments. I can also skip forward or backward in 10 second increments by simply swiping left or right with a gesture instead of the buttons. I can also swipe up to reveal controls down below for skipping tracks entirely. As you can see, though, The Little Mermaid is shown as one long track up top, even though it's made up of three parts, three different files, which you can see down below. As I skip to the next part, the progress up top shows the overall progress of the book and not just the file that is currently loaded. Very nice. Now up top, I can set the sleep timer if I need to, as well as a history of time codes that I've jumped to when playing this book and even drop a bookmark on important points for later reference. Now I get to my full library again. We'll tap that book icon. And in the side slide out tray, there are options for things like speed of playback. If I want it to play back a little faster, equalizer settings for sound shaping and more. Listen audiobook player is $1.49 in the Play Store now. Next, let's take a look at smart audiobook player. Here is, first of all, my library view. Again, showing those images that exist for each file and the author below each book's title. The total time for each book is shown, though we don't get really any indication as far as how much into each book we already are from here. Let's jump into Snow Queen. And right away, I, I really like the look of the player page. The image is set behind with all of the player controls superimposed on top and is very clean looking. Down below, you get the 10 second skip and one minute skip options spelled out this time so it's easy to know what to expect when you tap them. There are two progress bars located up top. The bottom one controls each individual file's playback location. The Snow Queen is actually three separate files, so when I jump around here, it's only scanning through that first file. But you will notice the top progress bar shows where we are inside of the full book. And above that, there's things like the sleep timer and tapping that simply turns it on while a tap and a hold brings up the options for tweaking the setting. I can easily change the playback speed here 
or drop a bookmark simply by tapping and holding the bookmark button. And I can lock the interface for a more simplified view, removing some of those extra controls. I'll back out to the library now where I'm giving views for new books, books I've started where the Snow Queen now sits because I started that. And finally, books that I have finished. Oh, and check this out. Any book in my list that does not have associated art can be tapped, and then I'll go ahead and tap search cover on the internet. This is going to pull up a Google image search. I just tap the one that fits, and after a few little workings here, it looks pretty darn good. Love that feature. The full version is free for the first 30 days and can then be purchased for $2 inside the app. Find Smart Audiobook Player in the Play Store now. Finally, of course, there's a material design focused audiobook player app. Guess what it's called? Material Audiobook Player. Mm -hmm. Here's the main player page, uh, the main library of all the audiobooks in the folder. Things look a bit incomplete compared to the other two apps we've shown off. I'm guessing because the others would surface the file name and Material Audiobook Player appears to be relying on the ID3 info tags within the MP3 files if they happen to exist. And when they don't, you see the generic icons along with generic and, in this case, incorrect titles. I would need to go through and clean this up to start with. I'll go ahead and tap into one of those that's lacking that extra information and identify it. Of course, I'll play through to figure out which one it is. Then I'll back out to the main page where I'll edit the name. And things are looking a little bit better now. I can also edit the cover. Here I'm given a Google image search result. And I can just find an image that works and then tap that fab for cropping controls, tweak it a little bit, accept it, and now we're back on track. Let's tap into the Snow Queen again since it's a three-part book. And the player page looks clean in a recognizable material way. Down below are the player controls. Here they're offering only 20-second or full track skip, though the skip amount can be dialed into taste within the preferences. The playback progress is shown for the individual file. And that pull down there shows all the parts or chapters for this selection. There's a sleep timer, of course, up top, again, configurable in preferences, and a bookmark option. And the overflow menu offers things like playback speed and a way to jump to a specific point in the book. Material Audiobook Player has a clean look, but I did encounter a few bugs in my time with it, so keep that in mind. Material Audiobook Player is open source and completely free in the Play Store now. Now, in my time with all three, I'd say that the one I'll pick for my road trip is Smart Audiobook Player. I just kind of like the flow of the app, and it seemed to do the best job recognizing my media and making it immediately enjoyable. Another option, by the way, would be to use a service like Google Play Music. That way, the books are synced to the cloud and accessible from any device. The challenge there is that Play Music doesn't log when you stop listening to a book. So if you go back to it later, you'll have to manually scrub to find your place. And in the world of audiobooks, that to me is a deal breaker. Anyways, if I missed anything major, please do let me know. Arena at twit.tv. All right, up next, time to get your brain organized with this week's big app. Zoho just released a new note-taking app for Android, and it's super slick and I think worth checking out. It's called Notebook. And I love how simplified and kind of colorful the app is kind of Google Keep-ish in its layout, but a bit less blinding to the eyes. Here's the main screen where all of your notebooks are kept. Down at the bottom are a number of ways to fire off a notebook, triggering four distinct card types to make managing your note-taking just a bit more streamlined. There are text cards, first of all. These are essentially straight up text notes, as you would imagine. Next is the checklist card for managing things like to-do lists, or itemized list management. Then there's the audio card for recording audio notes on the go, and you get this nice waveform as part of that one. That makes the audio nerd in me extra happy. Finally, the photo card for capturing an image as a note for reference later. One part of Notebook is how you organize your collection. Any card can be clicked and dragged around, resorting the list around it. Or if you want to merge them together into a collection, you simply tap and hold each item simultaneously and then drag them into each other. And this is cool. Once you have the collection stack from the main view, you can swipe on the stack 
and that'll show you each card underneath one by one like you were thumbing through a stack of cards <laughs> which makes sense i'm not sure notebook is quite the evernote killer that some are proclaiming evernote does a heck of a lot more to start with but I'll be very curious to see how it develops and I'm eager to continue using it for my own quick notes. Find Notebook by Zoho in the Play Store for free. I only recently realized that Evernote is changing its free service to allow only two devices, which has me making the hard decision now. Do I pay to use Evernote or do I find another alternative and move over? After being so invested in time, literally years worth of notes in Evernote, it's hard to think about switching away, but Notebook eh, has me wondering at least. Send me your favorite apps or your categories, whatever you want covered on the show, to arena at twit.tv. You can also post those to the subreddit, androidapparena.reddit.com. Show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific, following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And new episodes appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.